everybody and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host Jennifer. Okay so <laughs> I just wanted to come in. This is going to be a quick recap. I'm scanning my desk to make sure that I have everything that I need. <sighs> I've been a busy little girl this week. <laughs> I started and I made two hat and cowl sets out of the knit crate for this month and I linked this pattern in that video so check out that video that video was probably yesterday and then I was watching some videos on YouTube and I tuned in because every time Debbie from the Canadian crotcheter makes a video I watch it like within the first five minutes that I see it because I love Debbie I think she is just awesome and <laughs> After Jada and Stitches, I believe the Canadian Crotcher is one of the very first crochet channels that I subscribe to outside of Jada and Stitches, who is actually who taught me all of what I know. Well, who got me started on this journey to crochet? She didn't teach me everything. My mom actually instilled the basics of crochet when I was a little girl, but like Jada and Stitches really brought the the passion and the the love for crochet and yarn into my life. But soon after I started watching Jade and Stitches, the Canadian Crutcher came up into my feed as a suggested video, which to have her in the company with Jade and Stitches like is a perfect match. Like she she belongs in that category of podcasters. Um, so <laughs> the reason I love watching Debbie is because she searches the internet and finds these patterns that I've never seen before. And she's very, she's very good at finding patterns that I've never heard of or, or, um, creators that I've never heard of. And she features them and she, she will make a bunch of these little things or these big things. And like, she makes you fall in love with the patterns before you even read it. And that is exactly what happened this time. And the very first thing that I remember watching with Debbie is she made a granny square hat. And she found the pattern online and she explained it so perfectly in the video that I, I was able to recreate it from her explaining the pattern. And it was kind of cool. And so I was like, hey, this lady's awesome. Like she she just speaks. Um, she she when she talks, she makes you passionate about what she's talking about. And I just love that about her. And the hat was really simple. You make a granny square to fit the top of your head. And then instead of increasing on the corners, you just start crocheting in the round, and it makes a hat. And it makes a cool hat. And it's an easy hat. It's a very easy pattern. So anyway, that's that's how I found Debbie. And I was watching Debbie. And she was talking about uh, a website, The Archives. And I will link The Archives below. And I will link Debbie's video specifically to The Archives below. Because she's the reason I was able to navigate the website. Now, I will say this. I am a very... Um, educated computer user. <laughs> I know my words don't sound very educated today. Like my brain keeps stuttering, but I know how to do things on the computer. I know how to fix and repair computers. I've been doing computer stuff a long time. Um, I've been able to hack into stuff that I shouldn't have been able to hack into. Like this was my past life though. I don't do that anymore, but this website was confusing as heck to me to the way their search engine works. So I had to rewatch her video several times to find this, but she found this website and Mr. Cinnamon knew about it this whole time and didn't tell me. They actually refer to it as the Wayback Machine, but it's like archives.org or something. On this website, there's like all these books and TV shows and magazines that are archived. So people scan in the entire magazine. And it's free to download. And <laughs> it's older pattern books and older magazines. And those are my cup of tea. Like, I love patterns from back in the day before I learned to crochet. I especially love, like, patterns from the 60s, the 70s, even the 80s. Like, I love the way that stuff looks. If it goes back further than that, like, I haven't seen anything past the 60s in, like, my physical being. I haven't seen any of those kinds of books. So I, I can't tell you if I love those patterns. I probably do. I and The older the better to me. So she was showing 
what she found and how to work the website. And she showed a pattern that she got out of, I think it's Crochet Today magazine. Yeah, Crochet Today. And they scanned in the entire magazines for Crochet Today. For, there's like 10 issues at least that I found where you can download the whole magazine and read it and then print off the patterns if you want. And I was really excited. She showed these little heart coasters. They're called coasters, but honestly, I didn't make them as a coaster. I fell so in love with this pattern. I was like, I have to make it because honestly, when you get a lot of heart crochet patterns on YouTube, especially like the hearts are not what I consider to be a perfect heart shape. Sometimes they're a little bit too squatty or sometimes they're, they're just, they're slightly off. And this was like the absolute perfect heart shape to me in my mind, in my imagination of what a heart should be. And so I broke out my cotton. Actually, I didn't even break out the cotton first. I've been trying to download this pattern for a couple of days. I was able to download it onto my phone, but I was not able to print it, which my printer is right here. My printer has been acting so crazy. And so, of course, like, I get frustrated. I don't want to deal with it. I told, I told Mr. Cinema, I said, I am so tired because I, my phone, like when you're reading a pattern on your phone, like it fades out, like, and you're still trying to read it. And that's irritating to me. I hate, and I also, I can't see on my phone. My phone is like this big. I need it. I need to be able to see, especially because I've not been good about wearing my glasses. So I'm squinting and I'm doing like the, <laughs> look it down your nose to, to read. I've been really bad lately. Actually, Mr. Cinnamon said that I need to get some some readers that are a little stronger because I'm clearly having an issue. So, and by the way, these are not readers. I used to have bifocals. The doctor said I didn't need the bifocals. Clearly, I need the bifocals. So I probably got to get back into the eye doctor. Anyway, the printer was not working. It was printing everything. And I don't know if I have any on my desk that it printed it was printing almost like a double vision it was so bad <laughs> little man saw the printed crappy version that misprinted on the desk and he asked me why was the paper blind <laughs> because he thought the paper was blind because he couldn't see it or read it so the paper was blind instead of I, it was hilarious I laughed so hard <laughs> so I said, baby, there's the printer is just messing up. It's not printing so that you could read it. It was hilarious. Anyway, so Mr. Cinema came in here and I told him, I said, the very first page will print and all the subsequent pages come out double vision. So we had to go through and print a page and stop it and print a page and stop it. Because this is a two page pattern. And if you wanted the big photograph to go with it, it would have been three. But I, I don't need the big photograph. I can just, you know, whatever. So anyway, Debbie showed these. She made these. I had to have them. Finally got the printer to work. And then for Valentine's Day, I had not made any Valentine's Day anything. And I usually do. And I felt bad. Anyway, Valentine's Day, I finally got this pattern to load. But also... Mr. Cinnamon bought me a new purse, which is beautiful, and I was so excited about it. But not only that, he stuffed yarn in the purse, which I was not expecting. Like, when you get a purse, sometimes it'll be stuffed with, like, papers and stuff to keep it fluffy or open. So that's what I expected when I opened the purse, and I saw all these little just cottons from the Dollar Tree in there. Made my day. It tickled me. Now, I do not need any just cottons. If you guys look up here... These bags up here, there's like two of them up there that is filled to the rim with these just cottons. I do not need any little cottons at like at all. <laughs> I, however, don't have any of the marled ones. I only have like a black and an orange one singular of these marled ones. So he got me the red and the white, the maroon and white, burgundy marl, and then he got me the green and the white, which this is so pretty. I think I'm going to make something for St. Patrick's Day with that. So I made a heart. <laughs> and actually, I was working on something else. And so I decided to 
do the border in like this blue jean colorway. This is also Premier Home Cotton, but in like the blue jean colorway. So I made that one and I liked it. I was like, well, let's try it with just the red marled without like a different colored border. So I made that one. And then I made two more. <laughs> okay. And then I ran out. So just so you know, this little skein from the Dollar Tree makes four of these. Especially if you use the border for with another color, you will have enough to make four. Okay. So then I was like, well, let's make, let's make another color. So I made a pink one. <laughs> and this is the color Pink Splash, I believe. And this is, again, just Premier Home Cotton. So I made that one. And then I made one with a darker pink border. And then Mr. Cinnamon wanted to go to the grocery store. So, and the reason he wanted to go to the grocery store is because I was watching YouTube and this video popped up and this lady was making a uh, poblano chicken casserole. Okay. The whole time she's making it, I'm like yelling at the screen because she was doing it wrong, like a lot wrong. <laughs> um, I'm, I love poblanos and I actually said this in the Lilo and Stitches video where I was talking about food. I love poblanos. They are one of my favorite foods of all times. Poblanos just taste so good. And so I'm watching her make this poblano casserole with like ground beef and like the way she seasoned it grossed me out. But like I'm, th I'm sitting here thinking, I was like, okay, I love chili rano. I have made a chili rano style uh, enchilada thing before. And I was like, okay, well, enchiladas are a lot of work because you have to roll them and all that. I was like, I'm going to make a poblano enchilada casserole type thing. Okay, I already had chicken defrosted in the refrigerator. It needed to be cooked. And I was like, okay, we need poblanos. Well, poblanos are really hard to find in this area. Like, you either have to go to the Mexican store or you have to go all the way to Walmart. I hate shopping at Walmart. I hate Walmart, okay? I just don't like Walmart. Their prices are good for some fruits and vegetables, but, like, I cannot stand the crowds there. I just don't like it. I don't, I just don't like it. I would rather go anywhere else. And the Mexican store, again, is way up the road. So Mr. Cinnamon got on his phone and he actually checked some of the local apps to see if um, those stores, the apps, said it was available for purchase in the store. And we found out that they actually did have poblanos in stock at our local grocery store. So we ran up there and we got poblanos and we got cheese and we got corn tortillas and we got all the things that we needed. Now at the same time, I also have to make this gluten-free. So I have to make sure everything is gluten-free that we're buying. And I already had enchilada sauce in the, the cabinet. <laughs> Because I always keep that kind of stuff on hand just in case. Because enchilada sauce, you can do a lot with enchilada sauce. I know. This is a long story long again. Just to show you this heart that I made. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Bear with, I, I don't know. I got no excuses. I just like to talk. So, I made this delicious, delicious chicken poblano enchilada casserole thing. It was basically just unrolled enchiladas. This should be real. It was unrolled inch last because I was lazy. I didn't feel like rolling them. <laughs> but I did all the other steps, including dipping the tortillas in the enchilada sauce. Anyway, it was delicious. It was so good. Everybody loved it. Even little man. And he was adamant he was not eating dinner because he is not eating a chili. It's green. He don't want nothing to do. He ate all of it. Anyway, on the way to the grocery store, and it was raining. It was gross out. I knew I wasn't going in. I was in my pajamas. I may have may not have had a bra on, but I just went for the ride to the grocery store. In the time we went to the grocery store, which is like right up the road, he got his well, he got his list of ingredients that I told him what to buy for dinner. Came back out and we drove home. I made this entire heart. Now I just made the heart two pattern, and then I just did a shell border around. So you do. A basic shell border around it as if just a regular shell like on the straightaway. So you would single crochet, do skip two, and in the third you would do five double crochets. And then in the third you would put another single crochet. Well, I did that here. But then when I got up here, because I knew it was around here, instead of skipping the two and going into the third, I skipped one and went into the second so that it wasn't pulling. So... I made 
a ruffled heart. Now these are all cotton. These can be used for coasters, yes, but these are gonna be little face cloths or wash cloths and I think I'm gonna pass them out. But I wanna make some more because these take like seriously 15 minutes to make. Well, once you get a hang of the hang of the pattern, the first couple took me like half an hour, 45 minutes because I had to keep reading and rereading the pattern. But by the fifth one, I had the pattern memorized enough that I could fudge my way through it, which is what I did. And then I went to bed last night. And I was like, well, I got a little bit of yarn left over. What happens if I hold two strands of yarn together and make use a bigger hook and make a bigger heart? <laughs> so this is thick enough to be either a hot pad to put your stuff on on the table and it doesn't scorch your table or melt anything underneath. It is... Um, thick enough to be a pot holder so you can grab your pot handles if you want to use that this would make a nice little thick doily for your table like a little decoration so you could hang this you could embroider I love you and just give it to somebody like whatever and I just did a different border on this I did double crochet chain one chain one skip one here actually no I didn't I did double crochet, chain one, and double crocheted into the next one. Skip one, or chain one, double crochet into the next one. That way, again, it fans itself out. And then here I just did double crochets all the way around for the border. I think that is so pretty. So, I know, that was a long way just to show you that I made a bunch of washcloths and a hot pad. <laughs> but that I thought that was a cool pattern. Thank you, Debbie, for suggesting that and for always keeping me inspired. She really does constantly keep me inspired with the things that she's making and what she's doing. She always makes me want to go look for the patterns that she's suggesting because she makes them look so much fun. And if she don't like a pattern, she straight up tells you, like, this is not a good pattern. Don't mess with it. And I just, I love that about her. I just love her personality. I actually had a dream about her the other day, which was really strange, that we met up and we were talking and whatever. And I told her that she reminds me of my mom. It was a really weird dream. But she does remind me of my mom. Not that she's old enough to be my mom. My mom died when she was 53. So my mom died really young. So like the memories of my mom is my mom being a young, vibrant woman. You know, so Debbie's personality reminds me a lot of the way my mom was. And I think that's why I adore her so much is just her beauty and the way she carries herself. And like her hair reminds me of my mom's. <laughs> Like this, she reminds me of my mom a lot. My mom was also a very petite woman for a lot of years. I mean, she got chunkier as she got older, but like she was always a petite woman. But yeah, so I know, rambling, rambling. Anyway, um, that's it for today. But I did want to show you these. I have so much, I like, I don't make things more than once or twice, but I set out a goal. I'm going to make as many of these as I can so I can memorize the pattern. And that I set, I set up to do that. I did exactly that. And I made like so many. <laughs> I made so many. I'm probably going to sit and make some more today. Because that's how much fun I had making those. I don't care the Valentine's Day is over. I might actually hang some of these up. Because I could put a string on them and hang them from the mantle. I might just do that. I might. Because I didn't really decorate for Valentine's Day this year. And I always do. I always do. It's okay if it's after Valentine's Day. Like love is universal love is forever it doesn't have to just be for one day spread the love people bye guys